He has appeared on the Tonight Show, America's Got Talent, Let's Make a Deal at the Comedy Store and the Laugh Factory in Hollywood, as well as military bases all around the world. Ladies, please put your hands together and welcome ex-male stripper, Perry Kurtz.
That was to pee alone. By the time I had finished putting on the screen, my wife made a sandwich, ate it, and digested it. So she called me up, we talked on the phone, and I fell in love with her right away because she's from the Deep South. And I love a Southern draw. I love accents because I'm from Philadelphia. So I, I talk. Are you from Philly? Pittsburgh. All right, good, because I need to ride home. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Philadelphia. I don't know if you've ever heard of Philadelphia. It's a big city, one of the original cities. They consider it an advanced thinking city. You know, they're progressive. They're so smart. How come they haven't fixed the Liberty Bell? <laughs> Little duct tape, duct tape, some of that crazy glue. And they actually built a separate building. Yeah, we broke it, so we put it in a building where nobody can see it. That's good. Yeah, so I talk, I don't talk. That's the way we talk. It's not New York. New York's different. Do we have anybody from New York? Yeah. Where are you at? Over there? What part of New York? Lower East Side. Lower East Side. That's great. You actually said it clearly. Very good. Because <laughs> you ever notice people in New York, they all sound the same. They all sound like they ate a sandwich, and part of it is stuck in the left side of their mouth. <laughs> It's like, how are you doing? How are you? What's up? Yeah. You know, and there's a difference between a New York mobster and a Philadelphia mobster. In New York, when you owe them money, they go, hey, hey, hey. In Philadelphia, they add a little head motion. It becomes, hey. <laughs> Turns out we're all afraid of roosters, so that's where it comes from. Yeah, I talk, I turn on the light, I walk, I don't walk. A walk is something you cook Chinese food in. <laughs> but my wife had a southern drawl. She's from, from South Carolina. And people in the South, they enjoy talking. They take their time. We're in a hurry. We always got things to do. Down there, they don't just say hello. They go, hi. How are you? What's up? And my wife had a phrase, you probably heard it, going over yonder. Whenever she leaves, I'm going over yonder. I've looked at 25 maps, there is no place called yonder. I don't know where she went, but she always found her way back. Yep, like I mentioned, uh, uh, I'm a Jew, and I'm not a good Jew, I'm a bad Jew. I love bacon, I love bacon. I'm gonna make me a bacon steak one night. Just chop up bacon, put it back together with a little crazy glow and eat it. I love bacon. <laughs> Sometimes I get in the bathtub with bacon. It's great because it's all slimy. And... <laughs> I just thought of that thinking, man, this is going to be really funny when it comes out of my mouth. <laughs> I think I just grossed myself out. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so I met my wife. And in those days, I was driving a motorcycle. I originally moved to San Francisco in, in 79. Where it was great, up at 70, up there, I, I became a male stripper. And, um, <laughs> I'll tell you when it's a joke, okay? <laughs> I mean, let's face it, when you look like this, there's no real reason to be able to do those moves unless you're stripped. And, uh, what happened is I was the MC at a male strip show for women in San Francisco. I had to say it's for women, because, you know, San Francisco, there's a lot of guys that'll, you know, bend over forts for you. If you could just laugh for the rest of the group and run around, it would make it so much better. So I was on stage and I was talking dirty to ladies and one night some women yelled, take it off. They were blind. But I realized that women see what's on the inside. Men look at a woman on the outside and we make a decision based on the way you look. Whether it's your nose, your lips, your hips, your feet, your ankles, your ears, whatever it is. Whereas women are concerned, they want a guy with a brain. Women will actually walk up to a guy and say, can you talk? <laughs> so I did that for a while, had a great time, and uh, that's where I bought the bike. Got to be good friends with Bill Cosby. I used to have dinner with Bill Cosby, and he was all nice to me, uh, although one time he did put a cigar in my mouth. I think it was a cigar. And, uh, <laughs> I just had to go there, I'm sorry. I also got to know Milton Burrow, one of my dearest friends, and Rodney Dangerfield. Two crazy guys, I love them. But I had a, a, bike, a motorcycle, and it was called the Purry Cycle. It was a big blue bike, Kawasaki 650, and I had a trunk on the back, because I didn't have a car. 
So I've been driving from San Francisco to San Diego, up to Seattle, and out to Phoenix, all over the place, just a big triangle. So I put a trunk on the back, and on the trunk, in big white letters, it said, Curry Cycle. Are you getting it? Yeah. Curry Cycle. People don't always get it. I would have people pull up next to me in traffic, hey, what's a Curry Cycle? It's mine. Your name's Perry? Yes, it is. What are you, a comedian? <laughs> yes, I am, and they would try to run me over. <laughs> so we went out on the bike all the time, and I was, when I came down here, I was working out at the comedy store. Richard Pryor was there, and Andrew Dice Clay was just coming out. And after going out with my wife for about six months, she says, hey, why don't you come out to my house? I looked out, I live in Van Nuys, so I drove out there. I walk in the house, there's a guy sitting on the couch, there's a little baby girl crawling around the floor. And there's a little boy and a little girl in the corner playing with blocks. So of course I said, honey, who are these kids? And she goes, ah, 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 I guess I forgot to tell you, I have children. And I'm sitting there looking at both doors, trying to figure out which is the one that's gonna get me out of the house faster. <laughs> you know the old saying, you don't get involved with somebody that has baggage? My wife owns Samsonite. <laughs> but the kids were cute, they were smart, and they didn't look like me, and I thought, these are the kids I should raise. Because <laughs> there's a law in Los Angeles about trolls reproducing. <laughs> so we all moved in together, and after a year, I learned that none of them knew their father. And I thought, I could be the father, because I don't drink. I stopped drinking in 1974, the year that I, I became a comedian. Thank you very much. And I really had to. I had one of those down and out things. Here's what happened. I was in Atlantic City, so I grew up in Philly. And back in the 70s, when you were going to go party in the summer, you would go to Atlantic City, this was before the casinos. Remember the song, Under the Boardwalk? I got arrested under the boardwalk many times. That's my generation. So I went into a bar, and I'm drinking Southern Comfort, chased with a Coke, no ice. Double shots. Now I'm diabetic. That's how I became diabetic. So I'm drinking two double shots. A trucker comes in and sits down and goes, damn, little man like you drinking all that? Think you can drink more, little man? <laughs> and I said, yeah, if you're buying, he bought me six more double shots of Southern Comfort. Mm. That's three quarters of a bottle. Now, I'm a little under six feet tall. <laughs> I'll tell you when it's a joke. And I drank it, and it hit me, and he got up and left, and I turned into liquid mercury, and slowly slid off the stool. And I saw the floor. And I said to myself the same thing every drunk man says when he knows he's drunk. Well, I'm really drunk. <laughs> It should be easy to pick up a woman now. <laughs> right, ladies? Why do guys think they're so sexy? Because they can mumble and drool at the same time. <laughs> you walk by and go, Hi, I, I, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I finally got up. I walked out of the bar. As I'm crossing the street, I did one of those drunk stumble against the invisible wall. You ever see them? It looks like this. <laughs> it works and they're fine. So I go into the other bar across the street, everybody's dancing, I'm walking up to women, and I knew they couldn't understand me because I couldn't understand it. It was basically that. <laughs> Finally, I wound up in the corner, and I'm talking to a little black girl with really big hair, and she's staring at me. But she's not giving me the finger and she's not trying to get away, so I thought I was doing really good. And she's just looking at me, just looking right out at me. And I finally got depressed because she wasn't reacting, so I wandered out of the bar, walked across the street, and I was standing on the end of the dock looking down at the cold Atlantic Ocean, watching the waves. <laughs> Nobody loves me. <laughs> I can't go on anymore. <laughs> I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> and I 
I stepped off the dock. What I didn't see sticking out six feet down was another dock. <laughs> I landed on it, smashed my head on the pipe, woke up in jail the next morning. My friend bails me out a thousand dollars. That's like twenty thousand now. I got a knot on my head the size of a baseball. And we're in his car and he said, man, you owe me a thousand bucks. I said, what happened? He said, you climbed two 10-foot chain link fences to jump onto a Coast Guard government dock. No. I said, well, I'm sorry, man. I, you know, I, was, I, was, I was pretty wasted last night. He says, oh, yeah. I said, the last thing I remember, I was in the corner talking to a little black girl. He goes, black girl, you're on your knees talking to a bar stool. <laughs> So I don't drink no more. <laughs> so like I said, I saw my wife and I saw these kids. And I, I knew anyway, my, my future wife. And I saw the kids and I said one day to myself, you know, these are the kids I'm gonna raise. So one day at dinner I gave everybody a little gold ring, put on their fingers, and I got down beside the dining room table and I said, I'd like to ask the four of you to marry me. Aww. And all the girls went, okay. And my son goes, yeah, whatever, can we just have dinner now? These boys are so romantic. So we get married at City Hall. Now again, my e house. How many people here had a nice wedding? Wow. Fourteen of you. Okay. Well, we got married at City Hall. City Hall is not as nice as the bathroom here. Okay. I walk up to the counter and I go, "Hi, we'd like to get married." The guy goes, "Oh yeah, you'd like to get married." I said, no, we'd like to get married. He goes, yeah, you get Maui. I said, no, we'd like to get married. He goes, yeah, I Maui you. Can we get Maui while we're waiting? He goes, you have a seat. We call you when we're wedding. So we go sit down. The kids are playing. 20 minutes later, we hear Sarah and Perry, please come in. I walk in with everybody. It's the same guy wearing judges' robes. <laughs> and the accent has gone out the window. He's speaking perfect English now. So he's reading it right from the book, but obviously he learned it. And he gets in and he goes, now Sarah, do you take Perry to be your lawfully wedded husband? She goes, I do. And he goes, and Perry, do you take these people to be your family? And I said, yeah, I guess so, I'm here, right? The ladies are going, no, because it was a dumb thing to do, guys. It was stupid. You know why? Because women remember everything that a man does that's wrong. <laughs> They remember it forever. <laughs> they never forget. And they know just when to bring it up when we do something else stupid and throw it back in our face, which I've heard is every 12 and a half hours. <laughs> so you got married, and I had a paying gig. When you're on the road, you get paid. It's called the gig. So we went on the road, and for our honeymoon, we did the gig in and spent our honeymoon in Barstow. <laughs> Pretty impressive, huh? Forget Vegas. We didn't even make it to Laughlin. And Barstow is a small town. It's a loop. You pull in, there's a sign that says, welcome to, thank you for coming. A lot of inbreeding there. We met people who were their own parents. We had more teeth than everybody in the city put together. And then we moved out to South Carolina, lived right across from my, my wife's father, good old boy, Jimmy. And he had a big party out on his back property, invited everybody from town, everybody from town over. And he says, hey everybody, come here, come here, come here. Mere is three syllables. Come here, come here, hi, 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 come here. And everybody's standing around, he goes, this is my son-in-law, Perry. He's a real Jew boy. <laughs> And they're all looking at me like, I've never seen one before. <laughs> and one gets real close, he says, how come you ain't got a big nose? I said, because I have a really big <laughs> ego. And he goes, what's that? I go, never mind, I gotta get the hell out of here. <laughs> so my wife wanted to have more kids. I did not want to have kids because, like I said, years ago I was a hippie, I smoked a lot of pot probably my body weight, and uh, I heard that it messes up your genes. So I didn't want to have kids, because I thought if I had one, it'd have an extra arm or a finger growing out of its head. My wife is on the pill. One day she takes me in the bedroom, 
and says, we need to talk. So of course I said, what did I do this time? She says, you did good. I'm looking around going, me? And she says, yes. I said, what? She says, I'm pregnant. <laughs> this is what I was doing. I couldn't get any air to go in or out of my body. And I finally said, any idea who the father is? <laughs> Not a smart thing to say. She looks at me and goes, that's one. Don't push your luck. So I sat down, tried to adjust to it. My wife left, left the room. And I watched her get bigger and bigger. Now my wife was a very healthy woman shall we say. Health. Woo! 45 triple G's. They were the size of soccer balls. They were so big she had smaller breasts orbiting around them. <laughs> so she got pregnant and they got bigger and bigger and we had to give them a separate room. They were gigantic. Finally, she has to be rushed to the hospital. Doctor says, Mr. Kurtz, we've got 20 minutes to get the baby out of your wife or she's going to die. And I said, can you give me 30 minutes to think about that? And he says, what are you, a comedian? <laughs> so they did a cesarean, ses cesarean section, took my daughter out, gave her to me, and that was the most magical thing in my life. Now those of you with children, I'm sure you remember, the first time you saw your first baby, you held them and you looked down into their little faces hoping that someday they would open their eyes. And I started to cry because that baby, it's more beautiful than all the roses, all the sunsets. It's more beautiful than cash. Aww. And I said, I can't believe I have this baby. We took her home, we named her Bella, and now she's a beautiful 10-year-old girl. And I know she's beautiful because when I take her out, women say the same thing, your daughter is so pretty, your wife must be stunning. <laughs> Do I get credit for showing up? So nobody ever believes me, and my friends have always said, well, you know, Perry, you're an average looking guy, your wife's an average looking woman, how come you got a pretty girl? I go, because God looked down and said, I've screwed these two enough. <laughs> so nobody ever believes that I have a beautiful daughter. So, I brought a picture. Aww. Isn't that great? I love the sound of women make when I do that. Uh, uh, uh. And woo, that's always good too. And she is so fun. See, most of my time I spend doing senior shows. That's where all my money's come from these days. And seniors are actually a lot of fun because they don't care anymore. <laughs> they will say anything. I love talking to couples. There was a couple up front. Guy had his hand, guy said, and the woman had her hand on the inside of his thigh. So I said, are you guys a couple? She goes, whatever. I said, how long have you been together? She goes, 54 years. I said, that's a long time. Just for the heck of it, how long have you been married? She said, four years. So I said, so you knew each other for 50 years and then you got married. What made you rush into this? And she looks at her husband and says, we were waiting for our spouses to die. <laughs> So they say crazy stuff. <laughs> so a couple years ago, my daughter said, let me go with you. Her first joke she wrote when she was uh, seven years old, why did the chicken cross the road? He was tired of being cooped up. Aww. Next year, why was the skeleton afraid to cross the road? He had no guts. <laughs> and then just last year, she wrote her closing joke. Why did the rooster cross the road? The chicken was on vacation. So she does shows with me, which is great. And I love playing the seniors, they're so much fun. But I'm getting older myself, I'm 64 years old. In fact, my opening line at the senior shows is, I'm 64, I'm not here to entertain you, I'm looking for a place to live. <laughs> and I tell them I'm 64, my mother is 85, she's back in Philadelphia, and I'm pretty sure she has dementia. Do you have anybody here with dementia? <laughs> I just want to know if I can repeat myself in five minutes. <laughs> well, I didn't know she had it. I called her up one day. Hi, Mom. Who's this? This is Perry. Perry? I have a son named Perry. <laughs> yeah, Mom, this is your son. This is Perry. Oh. Is Perry there? 
Mom, this is Perry. This is your son. Oh. Where's Perry? Mom, this is Perry. I have a brother named Victor. You know Victor too? And this goes on forever. So the thing about the old people is I like the jokes they're going to relate to. I tell them, you know, when you get older, the amount of time from when you've got to go to when you've got to go gets shorter. The time you actually spend going gets longer. And life is cyclical. When you start out in your baby, you start out wearing diapers. When you get old, you're wearing diapers. And I'm at a point now where I'm wearing one right now. I'm not embarrassed at all. It's a freedom. It is. I feel safe, I feel secure, because at any point, wait a minute. So what was I talking about? <laughs> yeah, so my daughter's so cool. Here's what she said last week, we were having dinner, went to Denny's, and she says, Dad, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. So I said, you gonna get up, or are you gonna do it right here? <laughs> and she looks at me, she goes, Dad, remember, you're the one in the diapers? <laughs> She's so cool. Anybody here have children that you know of? Hey, I gotta get the jacket off, although it looks cool, it's very warm, so ladies, please don't rush the stage. I'll tell you when it's a joke. Here we go. <laughs> you women are deprived. <laughs> the whistle and me, obviously, they've lowered their standards. I'm looking around the room, obviously, they have. But, um, no, I'm kidding. I'm going to wrap it up with something special. I thought we'd rock out, so I brought my axe. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> you ever see one of these? They're called Keytars. I bought this one 25 years ago. It was located above the freezer section in Ralph's Market. <laughs> have you ever looked up there? There are some gems, things you didn't know you needed. The bacon bowl. You can make a bowl of bacon to put your bacon in. So this thing is 50 bucks. Great thing it's got stuff built right in. Like friends, you ever see a scary move? They always sound like this when somebody's about to go. Norman, get out. But it's got stuff built right in. So what I want to do is I want to do a little sing-along. And the song is called Louie Louie. Do you guys remember it? Louis yeah, nobody really knows what the actual lyrics are. <laughs> because they were really drunk when they recorded it. If you ever listen to it, it's basically, Oh, I can't Man, I can't So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the rest of the song. Your part is Louie Louie. Oh, baby, we got to go now. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Louie Louie. Oh baby, we gotta go now. Here we go. Yeah. Well, I thought it started out maybe I would do a little bit of rap. These two ladies up front are going, wow, check out that. They laughed and looked at each other when I pointed them out. Now she put her head back and now she's still laughing. Yeah, cause this is the fact. Where's the guy from Oslo? Are you sitting back there? I really like you, like you really care. Look at him, he's actually dancing. He's got his hands, he's waving them around. <laughs> oh my God, he's actually stood up and he's getting down. He's shaking it, and then he sat down. Well, that's okay, because I think it's time to hear you sing. Everybody, let's hear you go. Oh, baby, we got to go now. Ay, 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 But a couple people in the back were clapping, at least they gave it a try. But that's alright, cause that's what I want you to do. Because I'm here to do a little loo and loo for you, a loo and loo. I, oh, baby, we gotta go now. 
keep clapping. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, a Lou and the Y. Oh, baby. Well, we gotta go now. What is it, Valium right here? Ay, oh, oh, oh. All right. And they're still going. Uh, just want you know, uh, my wife and I have been separated for five years now. Aww. It's all right. George Clooney is off the block, off the block, but I'm available. Woo. Is it working? I can't <laughs> tell. You're a very lovely woman. You really are. If, if you didn't have self-respect and sight. <laughs> The ability to get away. I would be all over you. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for coming down to support this. I'm going to close now with what I call karaoke. Remember, I'm a trained professional. Do not try this. Very good. Driving drunk. So if you are driving, drive as fast as you can. It's much harder for me to. I've been Corey Kurtz. Thanks and have a good night.